Mooney's corner kick. Straight to Nick Neville. And there's Arkins. So Shelburne, maybe with a lifeline. Nine minutes to go, and Vinny Arkins makes it Shelburne two, Galway United three. Nick Neville's first shot coming off a defender, and there was Arkins to put it into the empty net. So a substitute for Shelburne. Number 12 there, Tommy Dunn, coming on for Gary Howlett. But incredibly, Bobby Devereaux has just run off the pitch at the other end and gone to the dressing room. So Shelburne down to 10 men with three minutes to go. This is Barry Ryan, knocked off it by Mick Neville. But the free kick goes to Shelburne. And O'Flaherty trying to waste a few precious seconds for Galway. Neville takes it quickly. Arkins with the layoff. Tommy Dunn with the through ball. And this is Rutherford on the overlap. Lambert, the defender. Cross comes in. Oh, and Costello just getting it at the second attempt. It was Trevor Vaughan who went in for the header. Shelburne dramatically coming close to an equaliser. Good cross by Rutherford. Into the final moments then. Nolan forward. And there goes the final whistle. Ironic that Galway should have possession at the end. A brilliant win for them coming from that 5-0 defeat against Cove last week. For Shelburne, their first defeat of the season. And Tony Mannion, the Galway manager, must be happy with his team. Final score, Shelburne 2, Galway United 3. So confirmation there of that defeat. Team to play the United States and operated first and last. So no side has been able to stamp their authority completely. We begin this week's review as George Hamilton reports on Galway United's continued winning run, which lit up the night sky last night on a red-letter day for the City of the Tribes. Whatever about its place in the hearts of Galway soccer folk, Terryland Park was never the most prepossessing of venues, so there were few tears shed when they set about ripping the place apart to build a home that the game of the West would be proud of. And that's what they've got, with £350,000 Granted by the FAI and the National Lottery, Uderos and Galway Corporation, as well as copious assistance from FOSS and their own fundraising efforts, the joint forces of the local junior soccer administration and the National League Club have given weight to the name Galway United. It's all their own work and they've every reason to be proud of it. Phase one of this development, now completed, provides players and officials with the very best of facilities. Complementary partners in a unique soccer marriage, the senior and junior strands of the game both stand to benefit. Our first concern was for junior soccer and we felt that this was a great opportunity for us to do that with the cooperation of Galway United. As owners of the ground, we welcomed them when we got the opportunity some 17 years ago and I am proud that I have been with them all that time and I can assure you that the cooperation between both bodies is very good. We have now inextricably linked ourselves to junior soccer in Galway and as we see it that's the only way forward for Galway United. What excites me about Terry Man Park is the great excitement, the great uh, vision of the people who run Galway United and indeed the people from the Galway and District League. They together have put on a show here that will want to be emulated by many uh, teams and clubs of our National League. What we want is a situation where every young fellow in this town and county wants to play for Galway United not Manchester United. Galway United first and maybe Manchester United after that sometime. This is of course, you see Tom with the uh, Sangreal Tocht, Agus Kamalish in Tassari Rector Yenev, Egan Club Agus and Christopher Berha or Sanagalia. And because the Development Committee did so much for Irish, both before they got this fine new facility, which really through the matches and pretty people like Bernard O'Connell and others, I'm giving them uh, a special grant to phase one of £18,000. With smiles on every face, then, the formalities could begin. A bilingual blessing with an Irish-speaking vicar and a soccer-playing priest. And the cutting of the tape by the minister with Galway's Lord Mayor, Councillor Fintan Coogan, and the president of the National League. A new era in Galway football emerging in a flood of light in front of a teeming crowd of thousands. Galway, fired up for the occasion, were first to blossom. Ricky O'Flaherty turning Stephen Napier. David McKinley ending the threat with a concession of a corner. Well, they never walk alone. Corner from O'Neill, and Mark Herrick rising highest, but unsuccessful in his mission. From a free kick for offside, the Ryan O'Flaherty partnership burst into life. This was a feature of Galway's performance. Phil Harrington equal to the challenge, though. Cork took a while to get over this early onslaught. Once in gear, they showed why they've been there or thereabouts, as they say. Tommy Gaynor getting the better of Jimmy Nolan. 
and then in the right place to receive it back from Daly. Deflected though off Cleary into the safe arms of Costello. Tommy has yet to score from play this season. 32 minutes, the lead goal for Galway. Cork penalised inside the Galway half. The quickly taken free kick, catching the defence unbalanced. And Fergal O'Neill, which is a cross. It was a goal. This was only the third time the Galway footballer had turned out for the soccer team, so this was his first goal. The use of the right foot, the giveaway that the cross was intended. But Fergal wasn't complaining. 1-0. Then, Barry Ryan again, one of my men of the match, his combination with another former county panellist, Ricky O'Flaherty, very nearly paying off. A thoroughly satisfactory first half for Galway. City, pepped by the peppery half-time team talk, fairly roared into the second half. Very nearly back on terms with Morley's header from Gaynor's free kick. Billy Wood's influence was increasing. And he it was who began this after McKinley had won it. Releasing Tommy Gaynor. But on this occasion, Jimmy Nolan, resolute in defence. Determination etched on every face. Cronin setting off optimistically past Lally. Despite the shirt pulling, got the cross in. Again, it was Jimmy Nolan to see it away to safety. This kind of determination surely had to produce a result. Galway did flourish briefly, ironically just before City equalised. A fluent attack, Nolan, then Ryan, though sadly a foul by O'Flaherty meant that Ollie Neary's superlative strike was never going to count. But a scorer in form with recent goals against Shelburne and Rovers. With that though, Cork swept upfield, a long ball skimming Jimmy Nolan's head, John Caulfield there to apply the finish. A goal to put him top of Cork's list, his seventh of the season, coming in the 59th minute, setting up a fiercely competitive final half hour in which Cork enjoyed supremacy for a period. Gainer's corner, Stephen Napier first there, Caulfield with the looping header, hauled away by the third former inter-county footballer in United's lineup, Norman Costello. The big man was having a good game. 67th minute, Billy Woods dispossessed by Billy Cleary, Ronan Killeen then turning Liam Murphy, and back into play comes the old one too. First it's Barry Ryan, then Ricky O'Flaherty, and the cork was unscrewed. And it was Ollie Neary with the flamboyant finish. What a goal! Three and four matches, and all of them decisive. Lovely skills all the way through. First from Ryan, then from O'Flaherty. Great presence of mind and off the ball running, and a finisher who knows where to find the net. But that was by no means that. O'Neill, the early hero, lost his footing almost catastrophically. For City got Woods away on the right this time. His pace proving too much for Jimmy Nolan. The cross, perfection itself. As seemed the header from Caulfield, but that was the save of the season. Top of the right for the county, low to the left for United. Norman deserves another look at that. Caulfield's a hard man to deny. Costello proving a match winner for Galway United. Five games uh, back, we lost 5-0 to Cove, and everybody had written us off relegation material. But uh, we bounced back, and I think that's the way to answer people. You could have been top, but you're not. Yes. It's a difficult weekend, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, it, it's so close. Um, the game went on. It was a cracking game, terrific game. Both sides, particularly in the second half, played very well. Everybody enjoyed it. And I think it's been that sort of League of Ireland this year, George. And hopefully it's going to be like that all the way through to the, the end of the season. The problem from a manager's point of view is that it, it doesn't do your heart any good because uh, there are too many things happening that you, you've no control over. But that's the way football should be. Um, it's, it's an unpredictable league at the moment. It's an entertaining league. And I couldn't give you a clue as to what's going to happen at the end of it. Our policy is to put out the best possible local side and we accept the responsibility for that and the consequences. If we're not good enough to stay in the Premier Division then we have to accept that. If we're good enough to win it then we have to accept that. But I think it's th th the commitment to a local side is very important. It'd be nice to bring a trophy back here. It'd be lovely. Uh, if we keep the crowds coming in uh, I don't see why not. Wonderful win on a wonderful night for were relegation favourites just a month ago and now they're challenging for honours at the top of the Premier Division. Wins over Shelburne, Sligo Rovers, Shamrock Rovers and Cork City put them joint second and last Thursday they played Dundalk in Oriel Park. George Hamilton was there to chart their progress. Free kick taken by Lally. Doohan's head there. It's come to Ryan. 
Try the shot, cannoning off Whelan. Now Jimmy Nolan. Nolan rolling it through for Herrick. And Van Boxtel beaten, but the ball deflected away wide. And in fact, so wide, it's gone for the throw. And the throw is to Dundalk. Rogers up. Ollie Neary. O'Flaherty. And Neary up again. And the man solving it. Cody clearing it. Irwin. And Anto Whelan making himself available, but giving it straight to Mark Herrick. O'Flaherty going ahead. Herrick going on his own. Ryan wants it through the middle. But he's offside when it's played. Delivered long by Costello, but there seem to be so many white shirts in that Dundalk half. There's no way through. It's Cody. No offside this time. Nicely laid back. Kelly for Irwin. And Irwin going it alone and then bringing in Demange. And here's Ken Demange. And that's the best opportunity of the match so far. Coming after 35 minutes. The initial combination. Stephen Kelly and Brian Irwin. And Demange made the extra man to the right and had the space to shoot, but somehow fluffed his lines at the crucial moment. On by Kelly. And Demange was impeded and the free kick has been taken quickly. Burn off, first time shot by Kelly, which was somehow scrambled away by Costello. As the challenge was deemed to be a foul when the dog took the free kick quickly, Byrne made the ground, Van Kelly, wonderful swerving shot, which Costello somehow shoveled away. Nice turn by Byrne, bringing Cody into it, and Costello making the save. Lambert. Lally. And O'Neill makes the run. Whelan's across. And that's rebounded from O'Neill. And it's a throw. <laughs> Killeen. Oh, goodness gracious. Herrick trying the bicycle kick unaware that the Dundalk player was behind him and really I think that he was trying to be spectacular without quite appreciating just quite what was going on behind him I think it was fully accidental and the referee seems to have taken that view as well looked particularly nasty two players going for the ball eyes only for the ball there Herrick attempting the spectacular Richie Purdy coming in bravely from behind him unsighted for the Galway player I think that was fully accidental but nonetheless a painful blow for the Dundalk defender and the stretcher party being led by the Dundalk manager Dermot Keeley and Richie Purdy applauded from the fray to be replaced by Matt Britton Erwin Britton Kelly arriving oh here is Burr just wide of the post but credit to Norman Costello Brian Byrne arriving sweeping move up the right Irwin was there it came to Byrne but what a fine interception that was by Norman Costello spreading himself well and forcing it past the post Britain with it and Doohan's there and Mick Doohan for the second match in a row has scored for Dundalk. But the big former Bray defender gets the goal that could well set Dundalk up for a second successive victory. Britain's corner, met at the near post, the Galway defence in disarray, and Dua there to rush it into the net. Just three minutes from the finish, Dundalk won, Galway United nil.